everybody, it's Sierra, the Artsy Badger. And it's another day of Drawsember. This particular day is a Thursday, which means more skulls. For today's skull specimen, we've got a tapir skull. I'm using my Scarlet Red Prismacolor Color Erase Pencil. And today, we're turning the sketchbook sideways. As I said in my previous video, I like to pick skulls that are kind of unique looking. And I definitely think a tapir skull qualifies as being pretty unique looking. This tapir in particular is the Malayan tapir, which is the largest of the five species of tapir and is the only one native to Asia. They are herbivorous mammals and they are very similarly shaped to a pig, but what makes them look so unique is the fact that they have this short prehensile nose trunk. I think they look super cute. And you see that big fin on the top of their head? That is essentially the bridge of their nose. So they have a huge nasal cavity, allowing them to have a great sense of smell, I assume. That's usually how noses work. The bigger the nose structure you have, the better sense of smell you have. This particular species of tapir can grow to be between 5 foot 11 and 8 foot 2 inches in length not counting its stubby little tail. And they stand about three to three and a half feet tall-ish. They're pretty heavy. They weigh between about 550 to 710 pounds. Some have been recorded to weigh up to like over a thousand pounds, which is crazy to me. For tapirs, females are usually larger than the males. Another unique thing about them is that they actually have four toes on their front feet. Their toes look really weird. They're like little four-pronged hooves. Malayan tapirs have very poor vision, making them rely greatly on that little trunk for their sense of smell, as well as their sense of hearing. All four species of tapir are considered endangered or vulnerable. They don't actually have that many natural predators in the wild, but as usual, human disturbance has been their greatest enemy. Now that we've learned a little bit about the tapir, why don't we talk a little bit about the painting? So, as I mentioned last time, I really enjoyed working with gouache on that cassowary skull. It was so fun to layer the light over the dark. It was really satisfying, and I feel like the blending of the colors worked really well for a portrayal of a skull. But I do have to say, I really enjoyed this watercolor piece. I do think that, as usual, I was a little too speedy in my application of especially the darker paint. I just wasn't willing to wait. With all the videos that I've been recording lately, I just, I just don't have time to take my time. But this little experience with watercolor definitely makes me excited for when Drawsember is over and I will have a little bit of time to take my time. <laughs> But that initial flat wash, ooh, it was just so satisfying. I love how clean it felt and looked. <laughs> and this initial layer of sort of yellowish orangish shading, I really like as well. But it's once I start adding in the really dark stuff that it gets kind of muddy and the paper also starts to beat up and things just kind of go downhill. But I still overall really enjoyed the experience of painting the skull in watercolor. I don't think I've done that yet. I've always done it with markers or with gouache. So this was a really fun experience.
That being said, I still am really enjoying Drawcember, but it is kind of weighing down on me. I am feeling a little less inspired, I guess. I want to create some more original things. I really like my potted puppy days. Those are probably my favorite days of the week. And don't get me wrong, I love painting skulls, of course. Uh, I picked all subjects that I really enjoy, so. But you know, anything in repetition gets a little tiresome and I'm excited to go back to the normal schedule. We're almost there, just 11 more days. We're over the hill. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow.